Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Hey, Peony Nightmares here. I have noticed that over 30% of my viewer base is not subscribed to the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, and you enjoyed what you heard, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, like, commenting, and staying to the end will really help my channel grow and push this video into the algorithm. While I've taken enough of your time, on to the video. Have pleasant nightmares, my travelers. A scream came from above us, only too soon, after being hit with the horrifying realization that we were now trapped with someone, or something sinister, stalking us, possibly looking to harm us in some way. I didn't even want to think about it. That sounds like Liam. Brian said, before darting back up the stairs. Brian, wait! Slow down! I tried to run up the stairs, but my legs were weak. I got to the third floor only to catch a glimpse of Brian, already running up the next set. Brian, fucking slow down. Don't, don't leave me. I called out, but he never stopped. I made my way to the next set of stairs to the fourth floor and with legs of jelly, began to haul myself up. Brian, wait. I called out again as I saw him reach the last step. He finally stopped and turned to me. Brian put his finger to his mouth. Shh. I slowly moved down, trying desperately to control my heavy breathing. I crept up the last step. Liam was sitting in the middle of the landing, behind a single candle, the dim orange glow dancing on his face as he stared right back at us with a look of panic in his eyes. Brian put one foot on the landing, and Liam started shaking his head, eyes growing wider, apparently warning us not to go any further. The candle light extinguished, and Liam screamed. We could hear him being dragged away at a rapid speed, crying. <laughs> then silence, silence, and darkness. I felt like I was about to cry. I wanted to go home and be with my mom and dad. I wish I'd never agreed to come here. Before I knew it, I was quietly sobbing and fell to my knees. Brian sat next to me. We need to do something, Danny. We can't go back down. We also can't leave him. Brian put his arm around me. I fell against him. What, what if something happens to us? I want to go home, Brian. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Images of my family raced through my mind, upsetting me more. I know. So do I. He tried his best to console me. Do you not think Liam wants to go home too? He's up there himself. God knows what's happening to him. I can't even make sense of what's going on here. All I know is we can't leave him. I dried my eyes. Okay. Okay. I always felt stupid crying in front of my friends. We need to get these candles lit again. I have the hammer and the screwdriver. Maybe we should... We should eat these sandwiches and have a... a drink, or... Danny. Danny. Calm down. Brian interrupted. We're not eating any sandwiches. We need to go. Now. Get the candles, lighter, and the hammer, and ditch the bag for now. I hastily grabbed the candles and lit two. Wielding the rusty claw hammer, Brian led the way. We stepped onto the fourth floor, holding candles out in front. Constantly checking side to side, the darkness was deep and surrounded us on all sides. Pieces of glass and rock crunched under our feet as we crept towards the far end. We reached the wall and eventually followed the wall around to find a door. Brian pushed it open with a candle hand, hammer raised in the other. Seems quiet. Come on in. Brian whispered. I followed close behind him, checking behind me before we were fully inside. The room was a large square. It had an unbroken window on the far end, 
now boarded up, a small glint of moonlight granted us some solace from the unsettling pitch black we had just come from. I felt more at ease, seeing the world from the window, seeing the outside. I felt sad. I wished I could climb out and be done with this place. Brian was milling around, scouring the room. The light partially illuminated the center of the room and to a lesser extent the walls, but it was still dark. There are old cupboards and cabinets. Brian was opening them, checking inside in case Liam was hiding, but there was nothing. I felt safe in here. There was nothing scary about this room. I didn't want to leave the window, but Brian told me to get the bag and leave it in there. We'll use this room as a kind of base. If anything happens, I'll always try to make it back here to regroup no matter what. He said as he opened another cupboard. The door came off in his hand. Brian threw it to the ground and wandered up to the window. You going to get the bag then? He passed me the hammer. I reluctantly took it and went back outside. Everything about that room was completely different than what it was like everywhere else. As soon as I stepped out, I felt stocked. Like I was being preyed on or attacked. I quickly ran to grab the bag sitting at the top of the stairs. I put my hand on the strap. A hand from the darkness grabbed me. Jagged black fingernails clasped my arm and tightened all the way around. I looked up and saw Brian's face, smiling with glazed yellow eyes. He put his finger to his mouth. Shh. I felt my arm being pulled and I screamed bloody murder. I dropped a candle and tried to swing the hammer to no avail. I screamed and cried like I'd never before. I heard a door open behind me, a soft candle glow fast approaching, and suddenly, I was being dragged back into the base room. What happened? What's going on? What? What happened? Brian stuttered in a panic. I couldn't control myself. I cried like a baby. Danny, it's okay, man. I got you. Brian trailed off. Wow, what the fuck? He said as he lifted my arm. There were long, slender uniform burns where the hand had grabbed me. It stinks. It burns. I was finally able to get some words out. My arm was on fire. I dropped a candle. I think we only have one left. Brian looked at his candle, which had already burnt down about halfway. We got the bag at least. What else is in here? Brian rummaged inside, pulling up paper and eventually finding my sister's Polaroid camera. As a last resort, we can use the camera flash if we're stuck. The only other thing we can do is crunch this paper into sort of sticks and burn them if we need. Okay, I nodded, still sniffling. We started crunching up the paper into baton-like shapes and twisted them to make them rigid. To probably only burn for like 20 seconds, but that might be all we need. Brian tried his best to reassure me as he continued making paper batons for burning. We had about 11 or 12 and stuck them in the bag along with the camera. I kept the screwdriver out in case we had to use it as some sort of weapon too. With the lighter handy in my pocket, we rested for a few minutes to try and think of a plan. Do, do you think we need to go up any more stairs? I asked. Brian got to his feet as he began talking. No idea. We should just go out. Follow the wall and see where it leads. If it goes up, we go up. If there's another door, we should check inside before going anywhere else. We need to find Liam. I took one last look at the window, wondering if I'll ever see the outside again. I turned to Brian. <sighs> Let's go for it then. I said, putting my bravest face on. Brian lit the last candle and picked up the hammer. The door opened itself as we approached. Whatever was on the other side wanted us to come out. I wielded the flathead screwdriver, ready to stick anything that came for us. My focus was on getting it alive. I couldn't be scared anymore. Brian slowly crossed onto the black landing. I had one hand on my jacket and the other holding my weapon in front of my face. When we both left the room, I was on high alert, scanning all around, just waiting for something to come for us. We walked slow keeping our backs to the wall and sidestepping the perimeter of the hallway, looking for stairs or doors. I felt on edge with every step. The darkness scrutinized my movements. Something was there, something dark and hostile. I heard a thud on wood. It's another door, Brian whispered. We barged onto it, but it wouldn't budge. I saw stairs leading up right next to the door. 
Will we go for it? I asked. No. We need to burst this door open. Liam could be right in here. What sounded like a sledgehammer smashing the door from the other side startled us both. It was almost coming off the hinges, accompanied by a horrible gargling sound. It sounded almost like a lion stalking its prey, but more guttural. Yeah, maybe. Just head up the stairs. Brian said, already turning on his heels to run up. I followed close behind. As we neared the top, the banging on the door below abruptly stopped. A rush of air breezed past us. The small stairwell to the bells was in front of us. The bells were within four arched walls. The moon looked away, leaning up, and we could see what appeared to be shadows moving around back and forth near the top of the stairs. There were flies and bugs everywhere, and some noisy crows hanging around the arches. Two doors on this level, on either side of the stairs, seemed to beckon us inside. Faint noises from behind each had us struggling to decide where to go. What do we do? I asked Brian, my voice shaking to match the rest of my body. I don't know. We just check these rooms, I suppose. There's nothing else we can do. Brian raised the hammer and approached the door on the left. The other door on the right cracked open. Hey, Danny. The cold whisper I heard before. In here. I stopped dead in my tracks. Brian's eyes widened as he noticed something peeking out from the cracked opening in the doorway. I began walking over. Brian grabbed my arm, right on the burns. Ow! For fuck's sake, Brian! I pulled my arm back, blowing on it. Sorry, don't go in there. Just don't. He said, staring into my eyes. He was as serious as I had ever seen him. With just a nod of confirmation, we continued to slowly walk towards the left door. The right door slammed shut in anger. Brian opened the left door. The candle went out. We were plunged into darkness again. Brian swung his hammer up and down and side to side, hitting only air around him. I crouched down, preparing my screwdriver for... Well, I didn't know what for, but I was ready anyways. Brian lit the almost finished candle again. I pulled out some of the makeshift paper candles we made, and we lit a couple. The flame was bigger and granted us more light. As we entered the room, the foulest stench I had ever had the misfortune of experiencing hit me. The room was cold and covered in black stuff, some rotting black sludge, weird figures, and trinkets that seemed to be made from some sort of animal parts. The flies in this room were relentless. The fire on my paper torch managed to light more of the room, and we did see Liam in a pile of rags and dead birds. There was a crude circle around him, a black and red crystal-like stuff. I immediately darted over to Liam and grabbed his shoulders, and Brian patted his face to wake him up. He was limp, but breathing. His eyes eventually opened, and in the very limited light, I could see his eyes were bloodshot. His face was covered in cut-like slashes, and his clothing was torn up. Liam, get up. We're getting out of here. Come on. Brian said. His voice was urgent and demanding. We threw an arm over each of our shoulders and began carrying him towards the stairs. Brian still had the hammer. I held out some paper torches to light our way. We were finally getting out of here. Liam walked as much as he could, helping us as we were struggling. I looked up to the bells as we passed, looking at the moonlight. I couldn't wait to get out of here. Danny, Brian. A shout from the top of the stairs. I looked up. Liam was lying at the top of the stairs. That's not me. Run! He cried. He was dragged away from our sight, just as the bells began to toll midnight. Tonight's video was part 3 of the Scotland Bell Tower Witch, featuring Vidith 22, written by Reggae Junkie. If you enjoyed this, please check out Vidith 22's channel on YouTube. His links will be in the description below. As well as go pay Reggae Junkie a visit over on Reddit. He's an amazing author, and I've been privileged to do not one, but two of his series thus far. Please check them both out, and let them know PA sent you. Hey! Did you have merch? Well, I do. 
And if you'd like to walk around representing my realm and gaining new travelers, the links to my merch store, as well as all of my other social medias, will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. 242 Reads Rando Calrissian Seraphine the Midnight Pard Creepy Congirl Hair Raising Narratives Spooky Boo Scary Story Time Lichen Trucker Awkward Alien Kayla and Pimp Demon. If you'd like to join these lovely travelers by the light of my fire, you can do so by becoming a Patreon as well. Please remember the support is always appreciated, but it's never expected. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ding that bell if you're new, as it really helps push this video into the algorithm and helps the channel grow. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no stepping. Ah. Uh...